and welcome back to my channel. My name is Javi Cass. I'm a sulfur in Muncie, New York. You can find me online at sulfurcenter.com. Today's video I'm going to call the ultimate guide to buying mezuzahs. That's because it's going to be the ultimate guide for buying mezuzahs. So stay tuned. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing we have to establish when we're talking about a mezuzah is to clarify that when we say mezuzah, we do not mean the mezuzah case, we mean the mezuzah scroll. This is the mezuzah scroll, this is the mezuzah case. The, the scroll goes inside of the case. Now, what is a mezuzah scroll? A mezuzah scroll is two, as you can see here in this scroll which I'm holding over here, there's a section on the top, there's a section on the bottom. These are two parshios, two sections from the Torah. Um, the first one is the Shema Yisrael. Everybody knows this prayer. It's proclaiming our faith in God. And then the second one is talking about, um, so to speak, the nuts and bolts of Judaism, how Judaism works. You know, keep the commandments and everything will be swell. Uh, don't bow down to foreign gods. Then God will be upset and angry and not such great things will happen. This is the mezuzah scroll. On both of these sections from the Torah, it's written in them. So two times of the mezuzah, it's written. Take these words and write them upon the doorposts of your um, your home and upon your gates. Where do where should we buy a mezuzah? What kind of mezuzahs are there? What are the sizes for the mezuzahs? These are all things which I'm going to address right now. Now, more important than anything. If you learn anything today from this video, I want it to be that it is absolutely crucial where you buy your mezuzah scroll. And in order to explain the importance to this, I have to give a little bit of background information on the actual writing of a mezuzah scroll. So how is a mezuzah scroll written? So I'm going to show you right now an example of a mezuzah. This is a mezuzah, a beautiful handwritten mezuzah. A mezuzah is written by hand with a feather just like this written with a feather. This is parchment. This is ink. It's written. Now, one of the, there's many rules and many laws of writing mezuzah, but in this particular mezuzah, I'm going to show you something, and this is why it's so important to buy mezuzahs from somebody who's not only trustworthy, but also somebody who's competent, because there's a lot of laws that people may, you know, some sort of may not be aware of, and I'm going to explain as follows. Now, Every single letter in this mezuzah has to be written in order. So you have here, you see the Shema, the Shin, the Mem, the Ayin. If somebody wrote these three letters and then realized that in the Shin they made a mistake, in some instances, the Ayin and the, and, the, and the Mem would have to be erased, the Shin corrected, and then the rewritten from, rewritten from uh, the beginning starting again. This is a, a law that applies to Tefillin and mezuzahs, not Torahs, not Megillahs. It has to be written in order. Well, so why do you have to be trustworthy for that? Well, let me explain. So here is an example in a mezuzah. Um, right over here, where is it? Okay, this is supposed to say... Um, where am I showing? Oh, right here. Elohim Acherim. Look at that Dalit over there. Or where I should say, rather, look at that hay. That's supposed to be a hay. Look what happened. The sofer did not write the left the leg of the hay and now it reads as a dalit so like we know obviously these words have to be written upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates and this mezuzah does not say those words because one of the letters is written incorrectly it's not a hay it's a dalit so you may think that oh a simple fix let me just add the leg of the hay here and no one would be the wiser well the problem is that Doing that would be writing the mezuzah out of sequence. The correct way to fix that would have to be, well, erase all the lines from the end, go back here, and then fix the dalet, make it into hey, and then continue writing the rest of the mezuzah. The problem is, is that you can't erase God's name, and the furthest you could erase the mezuzah would be the last line up until right here, God's name, and you can't erase any further. So here you have a mezuzah that it took the sofa. I actually know the sofa who wrote this mezuzah. It takes him about three and a half hours to write such a mezuzah. And he made a, uh, a mistake. And this is a mistake which cannot be corrected. Now, 
so if you're dealing with somebody who doesn't know any better, doesn't know the laws or, or is not careful, or worse, somebody who's not honest, what they can do is, and remember, a lot of a lot of money and a lot of time here is at stake. What they can do, unfortunately, is just take a little bit of ink and add a little bit onto the letter of the Dalit, make it into hay, and it's something which is undetectable to the eye. It'll never, it can never be, ever be discovered. You know, you think you trust, you have to trust your doctor, you think you have to trust your lawyer. These are people who, if they do something wrong, they have repercussions, there's, there's repercussions. They could lose their license. They could, you know, this is something which, you know, obviously we believe we want to have kosher mezuzos. But this is something that somebody could easily do and get away with it. So, like... I always tell people, like, you're, you're so, you know, if somebody's concerned about the price of the mezuzah, more than the price of the mezuzah, they should be concerned about where they're buying the mezuzahs from. Because if you're trusting me, let's say, as the sofer to write your mezuzah, and trusting me on such a level that I'm going to be honest, that I'm not going to do anything that's going to make this mezuzah unkosher, why would you not trust me that my price is fair? It's like... Do you understand what I'm saying? If you're trusting somebody on such a level that you're buying a kosher scroll from them, then you, you should trust them that their price is fair. So that's why I always tell people, like, you know, let's talk about the mezuzah, and then we'll talk about the price after, because it's almost like it, it seems silly to be worried about the cost of the mezuzah and not being so concerned about who actually wrote the mezuzah. Now, obviously, I understand that buying a whole house of mezuzahs can add up, but there are very affordable mezuzahs being written by honest and God-fearing Jews. So it's not a contradiction. Um, good mezuzahs are not a contradiction to being affordable. But buying mezuzahs, uh, yes, they will cost a little bit more. If you go on to, uh, let's say, Amazon and eBay or even some Judaica stores and you want to buy a mezuzah from there, and I say some Judaica stores because some some Judaica stores have a sofa in-house and some are just as good as eBay and Amazon because they buy the mezuzahs from like a, a mass distributor. So. A lot of Judaica stores are no better than Amazon and eBay, but those mezuzahs that you see for $30, $40, even sometimes $50, are, are really bottom of the barrel. And what I mean is, we don't know, you don't know who wrote them. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know if the sofer did something by mistake. You don't know if the sofer, um, whoever wrote them, m made corrections. They just weren't an honest person. They made corrections to things which they weren't supposed to do. So, and if you want to know more about eBay and Amazon, um, actually, I have a video. I'll put a link in the description about buying from there. Obviously, their prices will change with time. As the years go on, the costs of mezuzahs now that are on Amazon for or eBay for like thirty or forty to fifty dollars, that will eventually be more. So don't judge anything, any quality of mezuzahs. Don't judge them from prices that I'm saying, but judge them solely from the source where you're buying them from. That's why I said earlier, more important than the price is where you're buying them from. If you're buying your mezuzahs from somebody such as myself or any other trusted sofa, then just know that I mean, you don't have to worry about what the mezuzahs are going to cost because you know you're getting a good mezuzah. As, uh, versus buying a mezuzah based solely off price, those things changes over the years and it's impossible to know that you're getting a good mezuzah it, it, given a certain price point. Okay, so when you're buying mezuzahs on eBay or Amazon or a Judaica store, some Judaica stores I should say, a lot of times you'll find over there very poor quality mezuzahs. So a mezuzah like this that has the, the scroll on the back that says how kosher it is, you know, they say with the, the chazer, which is a pig, we know a pig is not kosher, but we say that the pig, he takes it, has a split hoof, so he takes his hoof down and sticks it out to say how kosher it is. So I like to tell people, I say, you know, when you have, uh, when you have a scroll that has to scream on it to say in big words how kosher it is, that's usually a red flag to say how not kosher it is. So, like, if you look at this mezuzah, and now this, by the way, is a three-inch mezuzah. Almost any three-inch mezuzah that you're going to find, it's very, very difficult to write a kosher mezuzah, a three-inch mezuzah. It's so hard to write so small. I, myself, have tried to write a mezuzah this size. It's, it's, it's impossible. It's very, I don't want to say impossible, but it's very, very difficult to write a, a mezuzah this small and to actually be able to write the letters properly. I'm going to give you a little peek at what this mezuzah actually looks like. And if you could take a, a look, I want to show you right over here, Uvachal. If you look at that chaf, it, it obviously a nun, it's just not written properly. So if you're concerned about buying a kosher scroll, stay far away from three-inch mezuzahs. 
I know it's very difficult. A lot of the fancy decorative cases are made smaller. I don't know why they do that, but that's the, that's the sad truth. I did actually do several times for individuals who had like a really small case that was like something that they bought in Israel that they were like, uh, had a sentimental attach attached to it. Either that it was a relative's case and they really wanted to use that case, but again, it only fit a three inch scroll. So what we've done is I've actually mounted the smaller case onto a larger wooden case. And I have a, a picture of that. I'm gonna, you'll see it in the, behind me when this video airs. So take a look at that. That's an idea that you can do. If you have a really small case and you wanna have a good kosher scroll, you could put the small case on top of the bigger case. It doesn't always work. It depends on the type of case that you have, but that's just something which I've, uh, which I found that does work from time to time. Also, a lot of times these mezuzahs that you'll find, they'll just be papers. And one of the giveaways to tell whether it's an authentic mezuzah or not, I don't know why, but for some reason, if you see the mezuzah rolled in the case backwards, like you actually see the letters, this, this obviously this is not a kosher scroll, this was just put in a case. But sometimes you'll see like mezuzahs inside the cases and I'm just gonna show you here Although I have samples, but I'm just going to do it with this one. You'll see the mezuzah, you'll actually see the letters through the case. So that's a dead giveaway that it's not a real scroll in there. Now the reason why they do this, I, I like to believe that people are not trying to defraud anybody, but uh, it is possible, unfortunately, there's a lot of bad people out there. And then also it could be just a little bit of ignorance, um, that the uh, lack of understanding and appreciation for that fact that it has to have a real proper scroll in there. So... I've actually also been told by one shopkeeper that the reason why they have this papers inside the cases is to just demonstrate and show the customer what a real scroll would look like, would it actually be in there. So for any one of these reasons, these are all possibilities of why there are such poor, poorly written mezuzahs or paper mezuzahs being sold. The four inch mezuzahs, you can also find on eBay, Amazon, a lot of Judaica stores, a four inch mezuzah also, it's, you can find better written a four inch mezuzah, but very often they're still being written quicker and you'll find problems in the mezuzahs such as this one, which I'm going to show you right now. You can see that word is supposed to say uh, mezuzos and the vav is very short and it's a, a problematic letter, it's too short. The difference between a long vav and a short vav is whether it's whether it's a yud or whether it's a vav. So we know that there's no such thing as a 99% kosher mezuzah. If even 1% of the mezuzah is a problem, even one letter, it makes the entire mezuzah not kosher. Now, again, why do you have to buy mezuzahs from somebody who's being is an honest person? Well, you see it right here. This, to make the this letter longer and make it into the proper length of a vav, is something which anybody can do with a little bit of ink and nobody would ever be able to detect afterwards that such a correction was made and this scroll could be on somebody's door for a lifetime and unfortunately they would never have fulfilled the mitzvah of the mezuzah. So very important to know where you're buying the mezuzahs and not just because you want to know and trust the sofer, but you also want to make sure that the person who is selling the mezuzahs is selling you a good mezuzah. Mezuzahs like this I would never sell. So that's the three inch mezuzahs, the four inch mezuzahs, the size mezuzahs that I sell are five inch and larger. So that's five, six, and eight inches. Now a five inch mezuzah, generally speaking, is a good size mezuzah. And uh, I'm gonna show you an example, a sample of what that looks like. Again, cause it's written larger, it's less common for there to be problems in the length of the letters, the width of the letters, because it's a larger mezuzah. This will be an example of a five inch mezuzah that's written considerably better. Then you have six inch mezuzahs which are very, very nice mezuzahs, as you can see on the picture. And once you get into the six inch mezuzahs, the, the price will vary. Um, but that's to, to see the difference between one six inch mezuzah and another six inch mezuzah, it's harder to tell the difference sometimes because, I mean, it's one level of niceness to another level of niceness. Now, I didn't mention, and I'm, I'll probably have to save most of it for another video is, even in the five inch mezuzahs, there are certain details missing, which makes them uh, not as mahudar, which means it's beautiful and less um, detail on the actual mezuzahs that would make it not as nice as a nicer mezuzah. And that's why when, as the mezuzah gets larger and it gets nicer and more beautiful, the mezuzah will cost more, the sofa will have spent more time writing it. So like this mezuzah here that I showed you, 
while it's a pretty good mezuzah, I want to show you here the crowns on the Lamed, for example. You'll see, maybe if I take it out of the bag. Ah, there you go. Yeah, see that? The See the crown on top of the Lamed? It only has one crown on it. It only has one crown on that Lamed. And if you look at this mezuzah here, this beautiful one here, let me take it out of the bag. You'll see that on the top of the Lamed. Up oh, there we go. Look at the top of the Lamed. It has two crowns on it. And you'll see clearly that the right crown is higher than the left crown. We know it's brought down in Shulchan Aruch and Kabbalah. That the right the right crown is associated with chesed, with kindness. The left side is associated with severity, gevura. And we want to have, we want to draw down more kindness and rachamim from Shemayim. So it's important to have the right side taller than the left side. That's just one detail of many details, and every letter, almost every letter has a detail which could either be there or not be there, and has significant, significant importance in what level you're fulfilling the, the mezuzah. I mean, technically, to be a lamed, it doesn't have to have any crowns on top of it, but then it would be a lesser uh, mahodin mezuzah. So just realize that, that you know, when you buy, a, when you spend more on a mezuzah, you are typically getting a better mezuzah, a larger mezuzah, a nicer writing with more detail. Now, the styles of the writing. Generally speaking, there are three styles of the writing. You have what's called Sephard, and you have Beis Yosef, and you have Arizal. The Arizal implemented changes on several of the letters, and then you have a fourth writing, which is unique to Chabad Hasidim, called either Ksav Admor Hazaken, or Alter Abbas Ksav, or Ksav Chabad. Now, typically somebody who considers himself um, Sephardi will use Ksav Sephard, also known as Ksav Velish. Um, somebody who considers himself a Litvak or Litvish will use Beis Yosef Ksav. And all, other, all others of Chassidim would typically use Ksav Arizal, and obviously the Chabad would use the Chabad Ksav. And uh, although many Chabad Chassidim will also use the Arizal. Now, don't misunderstand me, a mezuzah is a mezuzah. If uh, somebody who's the, uh, you know, a chassid has a Beis Yosef mezuzah, or uh, somebody who's a Chabad has a Sephardi mezuzah, you did fulfill the mitzvah. But there are different customs depending on what your traditions are. So, uh, you know, if you move into a house and they have some Beis Yosef mezuzahs, and, and you, you're, you, you know, one thing I should say actually is how do you identify who you are? Sometimes people don't know what they are. So I asked her up once, he told me that, you know, you look at the Nusach that you daven, if you're davening Nusach Ashkenaz, then you're going to take Beis Yosef Mezuzah's Nusach Sfard. Would be, if you're, if you're a chassid and you're davening Nusach Sfard, you'll take a Rizal. If you're a Sfardi, you know it. <laughs> you'll take the, the Sfardi, the Velish Ksav. And if, if you're davening, davening Nusach Arizal, you'll do the, either the Rizal or the Alter Rebbe, the Chabad writing. So, so, oh, so what was I saying? So, but if you move into a house, let's say, and they have some Beis Yosef mezuzahs, and you really want to have, you have an English of and you want to have a Rizal mezuzahs, you don't necessarily need to change out all the mezuzahs. What I'll tell you is that we're more concerned with the quality of the writing than the actual style of the writing. So, you know, unless you're going to buy at least an equally nice mezuzah, and I'm talking about in Hidr terms of the niceness of the letters, the detail of the letters, it, it, there's no sense in saying, well, I want to have a Rizal mezuzah, so I have a $100 Beis Yosef mezuzah, but I'm supposed to have a Rizal, so I'm going to buy a, a, a $30 mezuzah, or $50, forget about $30 mezuzah, not even kosher, let's say even a $60 mezuzah, a Rizal, to replace the $100 Beis Yosef. That, there's no logic in that. It's better to have, we're focused, we're concerned more about the quality of the mezuzah than the actual style. But again, if you have to buy mezuzahs, then make sure you buy them according to what your minute is. So that's something that I want to just uh, bring into your attention. A question I get all the time asked, and I wanted to just address that as well. I know buying a whole house of mezuzahs can be sometimes overwhelming, especially if you thought that the mezuzahs were going to cost $75 or, or $50, especially now we're experiencing inflation and there was a shortage of mezuzahs for a year during COVID where so far we weren't writing and the prices of, of mezuzahs have just gone up a considerable amount and I hear from people all the time like really like you know I used to be able to get a good mezuzah for 60 and now they're more 
I understand that it could be overwhelming to buy a whole house of mezuzahs, a, a great and amazing quality mezuzah. But so one thing I'll tell people is, you don't have to, you know, just because you can't afford a whole house of beautiful, you know, mohode mezuzahs, doesn't mean you shouldn't buy some mohode mezuzahs. The other thing I'll tell you is, the last thing that you'll regret, I don't think anybody on their deathbed uh, kvetches and says, oh, I spent too much money on my mezuzahs. That was something I should not have done. There's nothing better to spend the, mo your, to spend the money on. Of course, if you could afford it, if you have the money, there's nothing more important, there's nothing better than you could spend your money on than having beautiful mohode mezuzahs. A mohode mezuzah is... It's, it's a mitzvah which you fulfill every moment that the mezuzah is on the door. You know, some people, I understand, they struggle with certain mitzvahs. You know, why should I get the nicest? Why should I get the best? Or, you know, keeping kosher could be challenging for some people. Buying a nice esrog for others could be challenging for different reasons. You know, after a week, it's, it's just a regular fruit. I can't do the mitzvah for it anymore. Or, you know, kosher or Shabbat could be... a a struggle which is something which it's not a one-time thing it's it's a struggle every time but some people don't have that struggle and they're they're fortunate but what I'm trying to tell you is the mezuzah is something you buy it once you buy it one time in your life hopefully you buy those beautiful mahudra the good mezuzahs you know that there's no problems in any of the letters you know that it has all the details you put it on the mezuzah you put the mezuzah on the doorpost and the mezuzah is done you make that bracha you put it on the doorpost you don't have to think about it again. It's not a struggle every day. Obviously, when we go in and out the mezuzah, the door, we, we touch it, we give it a kiss. But it's not something which is a constant struggle. It's not something which, after a week, it has no purpose anymore, so to speak. It's a mezuzah, This mezuzah, you buy a nice mezuzah, it'll last you your entire life. And I'll tell you something else. I've had it happen more than once. People who bought mezuzahs when they moved into a house and they... They didn't spend, you know, they, they bought more basic mezuzahs. And then, unfortunately, in their life, some calamity or misfortune happened. And a lot of times people are bringing the mezuzahs to check. And they'll, they're looking for me to find something. Because we know that the, the health and the livelihood, the parnasa, everything is associated with the mezuzahs. The mezuzah gives a bracha and everything. And that's because uh, there's, there's a lot. They say the mezuzah is the, the words, the letters of Zaz Mavest. It removes death. Also, the reward for fulfilling a mezuzah is, it says over here in the Torah, it says, um, why am I not seeing it here? Oh, here. Uchasavtam al mezuzah ispeisecha, ubisherecha, write them upon the doorposts upon your, your house and upon your gates. Why? Maman yirbu yimechem, in order that you prolong the days of your life and the days of your children. So I'll have people, and so that's why it's recommended when some, you know, you're going through a tough situation to check the mezuzahs. So I have people that will come to me to check the mezuzahs and they'll say, what, you know, can you find something? Did you find something, the mezuzahs? And I'll check the mezuzahs and I'll say, you know, Baruch Hashem, there's nothing wrong with the, any of the letters. All the letters are there. Nothing's missing. But it's just a very poor quality mezuzah. A lot of the detail are missing. The crowns are missing. Things like that. And, you know, it's not as it's not a mahud mezuzah. It's not a beautiful mezuzah. And, and what happens is they say, okay, forget it. I don't want these mezuzahs anymore. Give me the best mezuzahs. Give me more hood mezuzahs. What's, what's, give me a good quality mezuzah. So, so what just happened? If somebody was trying to save money when they're buying the mezuzahs initially, it, and I, again, I've seen this happen time and time again. It's not a one-time occurrence. It happens, it happens all the time. Now, I'm not talking about somebody who's not in the position to be able to afford mezuzahs. I'm talking about somebody who's able to afford them. I just wanted to... Uh, explain the importance of having good mezuzahs and what ends up happening is instead of buying proper mezuzahs once you end up having to pay for mezuzahs twice and then you don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to understand that it ended up costing you more money if you would have just bought the proper mezuzahs in the first place so now i'm not going to say that if uh, they would have the better mezuzahs something bad wouldn't happen in their life i don't i'm not i'm not god i don't run the world all i know is that when when things happen in our lives, we have to check all the checks and we have to make sure everything is in balance. And everything in life, every mitzvah is a piece of the puzzle. Some people, their their Yeshua, their help will come through the mitzvah of mezuzah. Some people will come through tzedakah. Some people will come through keeping Shabbos. Some people will come through achnasas archim. 
or honoring their parents. Every person has a connection to what's their mission and what's their, where their help will come from. And it's, you know, sometimes I've had stories where fixing mezuzahs didn't help the situation. But the point is that it doesn't take away the fact that it's important to have good kosher quality mezuzahs. And it's something that everybody wants to have and should want to have in your home. So one other thing I want to mention is we all know that when moving from your house or your apartment, if another Jewish person is going to be moving in, it's appropriate to leave the mezuzahs. And the reason for that is, like it's explained in the Gemara, that the mezuzahs, as I also it's explained earlier in the video, I explained that the mezuzahs as shmir, it protects from the evil spirits. And the reason why you're supposed to leave the mezuzahs for the next people who are going to be moving in is because if you remove the mezuzahs from your house, that allows, so to speak, you took off the alarm, you took off the, the, the guard of the house, and that allows the evil spirits to, to come into the house and to cause damage, so to speak, to the future inhabitants. And then it's explained that it's mida connected me, that you caused others to get hurt, so then your punishment is that you can get hurt in return. So to prevent that, it's written that when you leave your house, your apartment, it's appropriate to actually leave the mezuzahs there and not take them off. The house, this house, should not go a moment without the mezuzahs in order to keep the shmirah intact. Now, that could be challenging for a lot of people. Let's say you bought beautiful mezuzahs, you know, it's a lot of money. It could be thousands of dollars if you have many doors in the house. So what do you do? So one of the things that we do is a lot of times buyers will reimburse sellers for the mezuzahs um, and things like that, or you can change them out for a lesser expensive mezuzah. And this is why I'm mentioning this. A lot of times I have a chas and kala, they just got married, they're gonna be, they're, they're starting off an apartment, they have a couple of doors, and it's not the permanent house. Or even somebody starting off in a smaller house, they say, well, I'm, this is not my, my, my house where I'm gonna to live till, the, till my end of days. I'm gonna be selling this in seven years or 10 years, and I'm gonna be buying a bigger house. So I don't wanna buy expensive mezuzahs and then have to leave them there for the, the next person that's gonna be moving in. Maybe they won't want to reimburse me or something to that effect. So I tell them with Chas and Kal, I always I, I joke and I say, first of all, you have more you have more money now than you'll ever have in your life, which is wait till you have kids and a family, you know, Baruch Hashem, things get expensive. But I understand the concern. You know, you don't want to spend $150 on a mezuzah and have to leave it. So what they want to do is buy the least expensive mezuzah and have it on their apartment for whatever, a couple of years, as long as they're gonna be in that in that apartment. And then when they move and they buy their house, then their dream house, and they're, then they're going to buy the expensive mezuzahs. So my logic is like this, and I tell this to anybody that's starting out, that's considering this, uh, has this cheshman, this logic. We know that you can swap out one mezuzah for another. As long as you leave a kosher mezuzah there, you're fine. So why buy the 50 or 70 whatever dollar mezuzah, those five mezuzahs, and put them on your apartment? and then have to be under the influence, so to speak, of these cheaper mezuzahs that we don't know who wrote them, we don't know if they were written properly, uh, we don't know, uh, you know, the, there could be problems in the letters, missing all the details. Why live under the influence and the, and the protection and fulfill the mitzvah on the level of when we're basically the Yevon mezuzah for those couple of years, when you could just as easily buy the Mahudah mezuzahs now and have those on your apartment or on your house, and then when you are going to move, buy the cheap mezuzahs then, and then leave them there and take your beautiful mezuzahs with you, right? So you're going to be buying the cheap mezuzahs eventually, and you're going to be buying the, or, and you're going to be buying the expensive mezuzahs. So why buy the cheap mezuzahs now and have them on your door, and then buy the expensive mezuzahs later, buy the expensive mezuzahs now, the mohudr mezuzahs now, buy the cheap ones when you move out, and you never want a day in your life without a beautiful mohudr mezuzah on your door. Makes sense. I think it does. Lastly, I just want to finish off explaining that when you do decide what mezuzahs you want, if you decide you want to have whichever quality mezuzahs you have, you're making sure you're buying them from somebody who is um, competent, reliable, honest, trustworthy. You're making sure that you're buying the style writing that you want. When you're buying this, the cases for the mezuzahs, there's more on that, what type of cases to buy. I have a, another video which I, I think is uh, called how to put up a mezuzah, it's really focusing on the cases of the mezuzah, what kind of cases to use, and nails or screws and all that information. But when you are buying the case, it's important to realize that if you have a four inch scroll and you're buying cases, the measurement of the case that they might give you on a website or somewhere, they might be measuring the case from top to bottom. So they may say, oh, it's a six inch case. And you're thinking, oh, I could fit a six inch scroll in there. 
But in the meantime, the actual cavity for the scroll is obviously, you can see here, it's, it's much less. So it could accommodate a much smaller scroll. So don't make that mistake when you're buying the mezuzahs. Make sure that when you're looking at the sizes for the cases, it should be the appropriate size cavity for the mezuzah. Not the measurement of the case, but the space that the case, the space mezuzah, the mezuzah that that case could actually accommodate. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that this video gives you the the understanding and the desire to want to have good, beautiful mahudu mezuzahs. And if you can't afford the most expensive mezuzah, then the to buy the the best mezuzah that you can afford. If you like this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.